I received an email today from somebody who had seen my earlier video on printer color management. This is a simplified way of doing color printing using Photoshop's printer manage color option and using an Epson printer. So the problem he had was that he said that some of the controls that he saw me use on my video were not available on his computer and he wondered if I was using maybe a different version of Photoshop. Well, I don't think that was the issue. Um, Photoshop has not changed its printer dialog in several years. Um, I think the issue was that I did my tutorial using a Macintosh and he was probably using a Windows computer. And the difference is not in Photoshop, which is identical between the Mac and Windows versions. The problem is the Epson driver. Epson's printer driver looks different on the Windows version than it does on the Mac version. And some of the controls are in different places and are hard to find on the Windows version. So I'm making this video to show how to do this on a Windows machine. Now we've got this pretty, this, uh, pretty landscape picture here, our sunflowers we're going to print. And uh, go to the file menu, choose print. And here we have the uh, Photoshop print dialog. Now this is going to be the same on the Windows and the Mac version. You can choose whether it's going to be a landscape picture or a portrait picture. This is a landscape, so we need to choose the landscape option. Choose the printer you're going to use. I've got the Epson SCP800 chosen because I'm using an Epson Stylus Color P800. Um, under color management, you want this to say under color handling, printer manages colors. The other option is Photoshop manages colors. That's what you're going to use if you're going to do um, printing with ICC profiles. And we're trying to avoid using ICC profiles because that's complex. So we're doing a, sim a simpler way of getting good, good uh, accurate color. And that's done by using the printer manages color option. And when you choose this, the Epson printer driver does the color management for you. And so that eliminates the need to use ICC profiles. So you choose that. Um, rendering intent should be left at perceptual. If you scroll down here, there's other options for things like positioning and sizing of the image within the paper. And I'm not going to mess with those. I'm just going to leave that at default right now. Now the next thing you need to do is, is open the Epson printer driver. And that's done with the print settings button here. And this is what looks different on a Windows machine compared to a Mac. And so what we're going to do here is the first thing you do is you choose your media type. And for the, print, for the paper I'm using, the uh, Premium photo paper glossy setting is the correct one, but if you're using a different paper, you know, go ahead and find whatever paper it is you're using and choose it. Um, for under the color setting, you're going to choose color. The other option is the advanced black and white photo option, and we're not doing that in this video. I actually have a separate video showing how to do the advanced black and white photo option, which is a really wonderful way to make black and white prints. Um, but since we're doing color prints, we're going to choose color. Print quality. Now here's the difference between the Mac and the Windows versions. On the Mac version, you can choose um, print resolution settings, like 1440 by 720 DPI, for example. The Windows version dumbs it down for you. It simply says quality or max quality. And I don't even know what those mean because they don't tell you what the actual resolutions you're getting are. But if you want to if you want to control the actual resolution, you can do that by choosing the third option here, which is quality options. And you have this little slider here, and as you change it, you see the resolutions change here. And I found with, with the Epson P800 that the super fine setting gives um, perfectly beautiful results. The higher the higher resolution setting. You can't see any difference if you're looking at the prints normally. You look at them through a magnifier, you can see a difference, but nobody's going to do that with real prints. And it does use more ink and it makes the printing slower. So we're going to choose the super fine option. The actual resolution that's available to you in these settings is going to vary depending on what printer model you're using because different Epson printer models have different resolution settings. Most of this stuff should be the same with any Epson printer, but the the print quality settings will be a little bit different depending on what resolution your printer is capable of. And also some papers don't allow as high of a settings, um, depending on what kind of paper you're using also. So that's going to be limited in that way. I always uncheck the high speed thing. I think you get better quality printing without that. Leaf finest detail checked, hit OK. 
Um, down here then you have mode options. And what we're going to do with this is we're, we're going to leave that alone and we're going to click the advanced button. And under the advanced button you have two things we're going to look at. One is the mode and if you click that you have two options. You have Epson Standard sRGB or Adobe RGB. Which of those should you choose? Well it depends. Um, what color space is your original picture in? If your original picture is was edited in the sRGB color space choose the Epson standard sRGB setting. If you edited the picture in Adobe RGB, choose that setting. Um, once you've chosen those, um, the rest of the stuff I leave alone, the brightness, contrast, saturation settings, I have found I never have to change those. I usually get perfectly good results with the default settings. The other option here is gamma. The standard is 2.2. The option available is 1.8. If you choose the Gamma 1.8 option, the prints will come out uh, quite a bit lighter, especially in the darker tones. I found with some with some prints that have a lot of darker tones in them that the, that the Gamma 1.8 option sometimes gives better results, but for most things the 2.2 option is the best. If you find you're consistently getting prints that are too dark, try the 1.8 setting and that should fix the problem. But for most things I would try the 2.2 to start with. Once you've chosen all this stuff, click OK. Um, other options are things like choosing your paper size and whether it's coming in through the sheet, sheet feeder or the roll paper or whatever. Those are going to depend on what kind of paper you're using, so choose the appropriate settings there. Um, once you've set that stuff, click OK. And then you're back to the Photoshop dialog. If you've changed the paper size in your print settings, then this preview may change its appearance. Um, and then you'll want to make sure that you have the landscape or portrait setting correct and, and have checked your uh, positioning to make sure it's positioned the way you want within the paper. Once all that's set, click print and you're done. The, print, the printer will then do its job and you can look at the print and see how it came out.